Ceres, the ram, a heavenly constellation. Jewish tradition believes that the two skins with which God covered Adam and Eve were ram skins, and the ram was the animal offered in place of Isaac, Genesis 22. At this time there was a sighting of the constellation of Pisces the fish, an emblem for Israel, at the same time Christ was born. This oracle was given to Augustus. A child has just been born, who is the king of the future millennia, the true God of the world. He is of humble birth and of obscure race. His divinity is unrealized. When he at last makes himself known, he will be persecuted. He will work miracles. He will be accused of trafficking with evil spirits. But I see him as victor in the end over death, rising from the place where his murderers entombed him. He will reunite all nations. Augustus reported the account to the Senate, who then recorded the information, placing it in the Roman archives. It was read hundreds of years later by Emperor Constantine, who in his day legalized Christianity. Since Israel is on the lunar calendar, any sign linked to the moon occurring on a Jewish feast date is an important omen for Israel. The Jewish sages indicate that a blood moon is not a good sign for Israel. It signified trouble in some form coming to the nation. Here is a brief list of historical eclipses. January 10th in 4 BC, the death of Herod, the slayer of infants. September 27th in AD 14, called Augustus's eclipse because it occurred soon after the death of Caesar Augustus. April 3rd in A.D. 33, possible time of the crucifixion, darkness over the land. March 4th in A.D. 71, the plowing of Jerusalem with salt by the Romans. May 22nd, 1453, the fall of Constantinople to the Muslims. March 1st, 1504, called the Columbus Eclipse. July 31st, 1776, after America's independence from Britain. January 15th, 1805, the Lewis and Clark Expedition. And July 4th, 1917, the time frame of World War I and the Balfour Declaration. Among the ancients, solar eclipses often brought superstition and fear. The ancient Chinese believed that solar eclipses were heavenly signs that foretold the birth of future emperors and leaders of the state. One of the famous eclipses occurred on January 27th in A.D. 632 and was visible in Medina in Arabia. This was significant since the founder of Islam, Muhammad, had been expelled from Mecca and was living with his followers in Medina. It was in 632 that the founder of Islam died. The Moon Turns Into Blood One of the cosmic prodigies prior to the Great Tribulation is when the sun darkens and the moon turns into blood. Joel 2 verse 31 Taken literally, the moon is a ball of cosmic dust and will remain a crater-covered sphere. This phrase is a metaphor that Jewish scholars interpret as a full lunar eclipse, when the moon appears as an orange-reddish ball in the sky. It is not just the natural phenomena that are significant, as lunar eclipses have occurred throughout history, but the timing of the event. Joel indicated both solar, the sun darkened, and lunar eclipses, moon turned as blood, occurring in the same time frame before the day of the Lord. Apparently, from a prophetic view, these eclipses falling on significant time frames are cosmic marvels showing the coming of the day of the Lord. In Moses' time and in Christ's day, the set time of the seven festivals were determined each month by the positioning of the moon. Thus, when the moon is red on days of Jewish festivals, it is considered an omen that will impact Israel, the Jews, or Jerusalem in some manner. In the 20th century, on two occasions on the night of Passover, lunar eclipses were noted in Israel. On the Jewish year 5710, 1949 to 1950, 
and the year 5728, 1967 to 1968. These dates were prophetically significant for Israel. In 5710, an eclipse occurred after Israel was re-established as a nation, and again in 5728, the date right after Jerusalem was liberated and reunited. There had been much emphasis on the blood moons occurring in 2014 and 2015. However, Joel predicted both a solar and lunar eclipse occurring. It reads, The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Joel 2 verse 31 On average, there are at least 2.4 eclipses somewhere in the world each year. On an average cycle of three and a half years, about five occur, and approximately every four and a half years, up to six can occur. The most that can occur in one year is seven. In 1917, there were seven eclipses, four of the sun and three of the moon. This was a year of major prophetic events. Seven occurred in 1935, five being solar. This was during the Great Depression, the time of Hitler's rise, and just prior to World War II breaking out. Seven occurred again in 1982, which again saw a series of significant global events. In 3,600 years, from B.C. 1,154 to the future A.D. 2,485, two solar and four lunar eclipses will occur only 14 times. For 3,600 years, there have been three lunar and four solar eclipses 34 times up to 1982. Since the year A.D. 1000, there have been seven years in which five lunar eclipses occurred, 1181, 1246, 1311, 1676, 1694, 1749, and 1879. It is indeed rare when four lunar eclipses all occur on or near Passover, Israel's first festival, and tabernacles, Israel's seventh and final yearly convocation. However, according to NASA, in back-to-back -back years, 2014 and 2015, four blood moons coincide with these festivals. The blood moons are as follows. First day of Passover, April 15, 2014. First Day of Tabernacles, October 8, 2014. First Day of Passover, April 4, 2015. And First Day of Tabernacles, September 28, 2015. Four solar eclipses also coincide with these festivals, April 29th and October 23rd in 2014, and March 20th and September 13th in 2015. The blood moons falling in line with these dates is certainly a prophetic prodigy for Israel. However, they alone are only one part of the Joel prophecy. The sun turning dark can be a reference to solar eclipses, which will also occur in the spring and fall cycles. Jewish rabbinical tradition gives a detailed list of eclipses that project to be omens. Solar eclipses are a bad omen for idolaters. Lunar eclipses are bad omens for Israel. A red moon at a lunar eclipse means a sword is coming for the whole world. A black moon at a lunar eclipse means the arrows of famine are coming for the whole world. At sunset, the calamity will tarry in its coming. At sunrise, the calamity is forthcoming. Time will determine what these blood moons on festivals represent and if they are cosmic harbingers, Christ did say there would be signs in the moon, Luke 21, verse 25. When the combination of signs in the stars, the moon, and the sun collide at the same time, then the signs in the heavens are evident. Three Ways God Counts Prophetic Time The lights of heaven are God's cosmic timepiece. Before there was a printed calendar, time was kept by the moon and sun. There were three biblical time cycles that were significant to the Hebrew people. The first is sabbatical cycles. The weekly Sabbath was set for the seventh day out of every week, 
called Shabbat, meaning rest or cessation, Exodus 20, verses 10 and 11. This was originally Saturday. Today, devout Jews and Messianic believers mark Friday at sunset to Saturday at sunset as the Sabbath. A second cycle in Hebrew is called Shemitah, meaning release. It is a cycle repeated every seven years, serving as an agricultural period allowing the land to rest and the ground to lay fallow the entire seventh year. Leviticus 25 verses 2 through 4. Because Israel did not keep the Shemitah, God sent them into captivity for 70 years to allow the land to rest. Leviticus 26, verses 32 through 35. A third counting was to add up seven yearly cycles seven times, or seven times seven equals 49 years, and decree a jubilee on the tenth day of the seventh month every fiftieth year. Leviticus 25, verses 8 and 9. Many of Israel's prophetic movements and significant events are in patterns of sevens. Jacob worked seven years and was given the wrong wife. He worked seven more years for his father-in-law Laban to marry his true love, Rachel. Genesis 29, verses 18 through 20. A seven-year famine brought Joseph's brothers to Egypt, eventually providing a home for them during the global crisis. Genesis 41. Seven priests with seven trumpets marched around Jericho, and on the seventh day, after seven times, the walls collapsed. Joshua 6 In the Esther story, there were seven chamberlains, Esther 1 verse 10, seven princes of Media and Persia, Esther 1 verse 14, and seven maidens for Esther, chapter 2 verse 9. It was Esther who saved the Jews in 127 provinces. After giving an offering of seven bulls and seven rams, the Lord turned Job's captivity and gave him a double blessing. Job 42, verses 8 through 10. David declared that seven times a day he praised the Lord. Psalm 119, verse 164. Thus, seven is connected with Israel's breakthroughs and spiritual favor. The second clear method of counting time is by jubilees. In Hebrew, the word for jubilee is yovel, a trumpet blast, as this represents the year of freedom. A release occurred on cycles of every 50 years, beginning on the Day of Atonement, by blowing silver trumpets. Leviticus 25 verse 9. This system of counting major events every 49th or 50th year was so significant that an entire book was compiled called the Book of Jubilees. It is believed a Pharisee between 135 and 105 B.C. wrote this Hebrew book. The introduction begins, These are the words of the division of days according to the law and testimony, according to the events of the years, according to their sevens, according to their jubilees, to all of the years of the world. The author begins his counting with the time of creation until his day, placing Israel's major events on jubilee cycles, 50 years apart, attempting to demonstrate that Israel's major events fell on 50-year intervals. The book is filled with traditions and changes in certain biblical narratives, filling in gaps of time not found in the Torah. Fifteen copies, or fragments, of the book of Jubilees were discovered when the much-publicized Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered in the Qumran Caves, now located in Israel, 1948 through 1952. The writer begins his count from creation and concludes it with the date of Israel entering the Promised Land, counting 2,450 years, dividing these years into 50 49-year units, or jubilees. I mention this book not to give credence to its contents, but to show how there was an elaborate scheme that emerged to promote the belief of the significance of jubilee cycles in Hebrew history. The writer also frequently uses sevens, called heptads, meaning groups of sevens. It has been noted that major events with Israel can fall on jubilee cycles. 
The cycle began when Israel first took the promised land.